JavaScript is one of the most popular programming languages in the world, but it's also one of the most hated. Why do people hate JavaScript? Let's be real, JavaScript comes with a lot of baggage. It was thrown together in just 10 days back in 1995 by one guy and was meant to be a lightweight scripting tool to add basic interactivity to web pages. It was never designed for the huge complicated apps we're building today. So yeah, it has its quirks to put it kindly. It's enough to trip up even the most experienced developers. And I promise you, this isn't just me hating JavaScript because I failed my own fair share of front-end interviews. For starters, JavaScript automatically converts values from one type to another. This is called type coercion. And while it was meant to make JavaScript more flexible and forgiving, it often ends up leading to unpredictable results, making things super confusing and sometimes just plain unpredictable. I'm sure you've seen the many JavaScript object object memes out there. Let's go over some of the most classic examples. If you add two empty arrays, you get empty string. Type of not a number is number, obviously. Type of null, is object, also obviously. The number zero double equals the string zero is true. The number zero double equals empty array is also true. However, the string zero double equals empty array is false. If you add two empty objects, you get not a number. Addition and subtraction can also be funny. If you add the string five to one, you get 51 as a string. If you subtract one from the string five, you get four. If you subtract from a string that doesn't look like a number, for example, Madeline minus one, you get not a number. JavaScript also doesn't believe in the commutative property you know, the fundamental math idea that a plus b equals b plus a. Empty array plus empty object is object object, but empty object plus empty array is zero. This list honestly goes on and on. This ties into the next topic I want to talk about, JavaScript equality operators. They are confusing. We have loose equality, double equals, and strict equality, triple equals. To be honest, I say that you usually don't want to use loose equality, but we're going to talk about them both here. Loose equality performs type coercion before making the comparison. This means that even though you might be comparing two completely different types of data, JavaScript will try to make them the same before checking if they are equal. This results in some of the previous weird behavior we saw. Let's say we have the string zero double equals false. This evaluates to true because JavaScript coerces both the string zero and false into the same type, both become the value false. And since false double equals false, it returns true. On the other hand, strict equality returns true only if both values and types are exactly the same. For our previous example, if we use strict equality instead, the string zero triple equals false, this will return false. Now let's look at empty array double equals not empty array and empty array not double equals not empty array. This evaluates to true. At first glance, this might be confusing, but the reason that they both return the same value is because double equals is loose equality, while not double equals is actually strict equality. Now, for both expressions, when you do not empty array, the empty array is considered a truthy value and not empty array ends up being false. Interestingly, not a number or NAN is the only value in JavaScript that doesn't strictly equal itself. So not a number triple equals not a number evaluates to false. There is one major exception to when you might want to use loose equality instead of strict equality, and that's null versus undefined. JavaScript has these two special values for representing no value null and undefined. A lot of people don't know the difference between these. Undefined means a variable has no value assigned, while null means that the value is intentionally empty. In other words, Undefined is a runtime generated missing value, while null is a compile time author supplied missing value. Null double equals undefined is true, while null triple equals undefined is false. So you might want to use loose instead of strict equality since your app might want to treat these both as just containing no value. Besides this, JavaScript also requires some custom functions for quite simple operations that other languages have natively. For example, take JavaScript sort. Let's say you have an array of numbers like 1, 100, 207, 30, 45. If you use array.sort to sort this array, you might expect it to sort numerically, but by default, sort treats elements as strings. So instead of getting the correct solution, which is 1, 30, 45, 100, 207, you'll get 1, 100, 207, 30, 45. So in order to get a correct numeric sort, you have to provide a custom compare function. Another example is JavaScript's max min functions. Yes, JavaScript has math.max and math.min, but you have to use a spread operator to pass in your array properly. So for our array, we do math.max and spread the array, 1, 100, 207, 30, 45, to get the proper answer, 207. Otherwise, doing max.math and just putting the array directly in returns not a number. This isn't inherently obvious and can be a very easy mistake to overlook. As you can probably tell, JavaScript can be quite unintuitive. And one of its most perplexing features is the this keyword. On the surface, this is supposed to refer to the object that the function is a method of, but in reality, its value can change drastically depending on the context in which it's used. This flexibility, while powerful, also makes 
makes it one of the most confusing aspects of the language. The this keyword can shift and morph depending on where it's called from, causing unexpected behavior. For example, in a method call, this typically refers to the object that method belongs to. But when the function is invoked in a different way, like in a standalone function, or an event handler, this might point to the global object or be undefined. And in arrow functions, this behaves differently altogether as it binds this from its surrounding context rather than being dynamically determined. The dynamic nature of this can be hard to understand as the value of holes changes depending on how, where, and when the function is executed. For those of you used to other programming languages, JavaScript is just different in many ways. While this isn't an inherently good or bad thing, it can be annoying or difficult to switch to JavaScript if you're coming from a language like Java or C++. In JavaScript, there's no distinct data type specifically for integers. Unlike many other programming languages where integers are treated as a separate type with fixed precision, JavaScript represents all numbers, whether they are whole numbers or floating point values, using the same number type. This type follows the IEEE 754 standard for floating point arithmetic, meaning that even whole numbers like 3 are stored as floating point values. This can lead to precision issues when dealing with very small or very large numbers. I speak from personal experience. JavaScript also lacks integer-specific operations such as automatic truncation, so if you want to do operations that are out of the box for most programming languages, you have to use big int. Also, JavaScript pretends to have classes, but it really doesn't. Honestly, JavaScript classes are just syntactic sugar over constructor functions. JavaScript uses prototypal inheritance, which is different from the classical inheritance model found in languages like Java or C++. Classical inheritance involves defining a class, which acts as a blueprint for creating objects. These objects inherit properties and values from their class. It's a clear-cut hierarchical system where classes inherit from other classes. On the other hand, Prototypal inheritance means that objects don't inherit from classes. Instead, they directly inherit from other objects. Before ES6, JavaScript didn't even have the class keyword. Instead, it just had constructor functions. These were just regular functions that you call with a new keyword to create objects. Those objects were linked to a prototype object, which is where inheritance came into play. So instead of objects inheriting from classes, they inherited from other objects via prototypes. Finally, JavaScript's module system can be quite chaotic. If you've seen the memes about JavaScript and no modules, you know exactly what I mean. The ecosystem is flooded with countless packages, libraries, and frameworks. As we mentioned earlier, JavaScript wasn't originally designed for large-scale applications, so it didn't have a native module system like Java or C. Over time, various systems like CommonJS, UMD, and ES modules emerged. The problem is that each of these systems comes with its own syntax and conventions, and many older projects still rely on outdated ones. It seems like there's a new blog post or tool every week claiming to be faster, but only adding more complexity. Junior developers often get excited about the latest trends, but the project ends up buried in another black box. The ecosystem can feel overwhelming, with hundreds of dependencies being the norm and libraries built for just a couple lines of code. By the time you master the latest framework, it's already being replaced by something flashier. So you might be thinking, well, Maddie, I can't exactly avoid using JavaScript now, can I? It powers the web and literally is everywhere. While this is true, you can often use TypeScript instead of JavaScript. TypeScript was introduced to solve some of the long-standing challenges developers face when working with JavaScript, particularly in larger complex projects. As a superset of JavaScript, TypeScript builds on the language by adding static typing, interfaces, enums, and other powerful features that make the code more predictable and self-documenting. These enhancements can help developers catch bugs early in the development process, improve code quality, and collaborate more effectively, especially teams. The first language that I coded in at Google was actually TypeScript. One of TypeScript's biggest strengths is how it scales with growing projects, making it easier to maintain, refactor, and onboard new team members. However, there are obviously cons to JavaScript, of course. For example, it comes with a learning curve as it introduces new concepts on top of JavaScript. There's also the added step of compiling TypeScript into plain JavaScript, since browsers don't understand TypeScript natively. For some, the extra layer can feel like added complexity. Still, many Many developers find that the long-term benefits, including fewer bugs, better tooling, and improved maintainability far outweigh the initial overhead. And to be honest, it's not fair to completely bash JavaScript. It runs everywhere and has survived this long for a reason. Tons of jobs require JavaScript, so even with all of its quirks, it is a language that can pay the bills. So that's all I have for you on my mini rant on why people hate JavaScript. Thank you so much for watching, and please feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more software engineering chats and career tips. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.